Yes. <laughs> I'm just getting some financial advice here. They have an office at Pinewood Studios, and yeah, so they're deep in the business. Brilliant. Yeah, so they'll I'd, know. I'll, I'll, I should get I in touch. I would get with teeth, you. face, clothes, <laughs> clothes. Yeah. Specs, anything you need to look good on TV. Sure. God, I don't. I don't charge any of that. Yeah, and you just write off 100 percent of it. There you go. Some brilliant advice, um, uh, Doc. That that voice, that lovely voice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doctor Roger. Gewolb. 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 Yeah. Gewolb. Gewolb. Um, has joined me now, personal finance and credit expert and founder of fairmoney.com and campaign for fairfinance.com. Um, finance is incredibly complicated, it feels, in this country. And the tax laws, particularly. All they do is see that they, they, my accountant said that it's gone from, you know, being about an inch thick now to being about, you know, nine inches thick, the tax laws in this country. Why is it so complicated? Because uh, politicians are handling it, basically, and uh, they're dealing with bureaucrats and functionaries. And it's like a, as they say, it's like a committee writing Shakespeare. It's just <laughs> total disorganization. Um, and the tax laws are... <laughs> They really need a serious overhaul. Um, and we now, thanks to Rishi Rich and Haughty Hunt, have got the highest tax rates that we've had in 70 years. Uh, and we are probably amongst the most, if not the most highly taxed country in what was the old EU when we were part of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems that there's no never, no end to to taxation either. Um, in that, for every pound you you'll get it, you're taxed on your income, you tax when you die, you're taxed um, when you spend, you're taxed when you save. I mean, every pound must be taxed what nine, ten times. That that is why we are so highly taxed, Petri. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when petrol was, I remember on several uh, programs talking about the fact that when petrol was up to one pound eighty, <clears throat> which it may well be again, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, one sixty of that was, uh, sorry, fifty-six uh, 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 percent of that was government tax. So we had tax. We had what's called fuel duty. We had tax on the petrol or the diesel. We had VAT, unbelievably, on the petrol and on the fuel duty, tax on tax. Wow. And then we were triple tax because, of course, the pounds in your purse and my pocket that purchased that have already suffered PAYE. Yeah. It's a triple tax. And um, uh, Rishi saw it in his heart to give us a whole 5P reduction yeah out of the 56%, the one pound 60 that they were collecting. And that, that really helped. It didn't even touch the sides. We ran a survey and over 80% of people said that they couldn't find a local petrol station that they used in their neighborhood that had deducted the 5P. There was no enforcement. So this is the stingiest government I have seen. And they're supposed to be Tories for goodness sake. Uh, they're supposed to be consumer and business friendly. This is the stingiest government I've seen in all the decades uh, I've, I've lived in this country. You couldn't slip a highly taxed cigarette paper between the Tories and Labour at the moment. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, with Labour? Because Labour uh, is refusing to say that they would row back on any of these taxes. Labour is refusing to say anything. Anything. And why should they? Yeah, they don't if need to. If you were in their position... Yeah. And somebody was sitting across the room for you, and he couldn't. He had this reflex of his foot going into his mouth every thirty seconds. <laughs> Why should you commit yourself to say anything? Now, I find that appalling. I find that horrifying. Why play politics when we're all sitting out here waiting for you to ready help us? Yeah, I mean that this is the thing, isn't it? That the tax is once a tax has been set, it is far too delicious for any government. To roll back. to cancel it, to yeah. roll back yeah. on it, and so even with um, council tax rises, originally Labour had suggested that possibly they might go back on those. Yeah. It's, it's never, never. It's just not going to happen, is it? We won't see a reduction in tax now in this country for some years. I think you're probably right, but you know, in the stupid family, we're like the kids talking about the parents compared to what's just happened. Okay. 
because their policy on energy, uh, which is gas lighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which they also use for everything else. Their policy on energy, the ridiculous idea that raising interest rates 11 times in a year because you didn't have the sense to do it over you know a period of years, but then Andrew Bailey has a record of doing this at the Financial Conduct Authority, waiting too late, people lose hundreds of millions, so they say. Uh, I'm not accusing him of that, but that's what I read in the papers. Um, so, you know, doing things too late, raising interest rates, crushing us on energy, on fuel, petrol, uh, on interest rates, mortgages and all the rest, these are all kiddies. These are children compared to uh, I, I said this the other day, and it, it went viral. Uh, these people are obviously so stupid, they can't see beyond their noses. For haughty Hunt, Smug Jezza, to raise corporation tax by as much as a third, yeah. when more experts than there are pounds on Rishi's tax return, telling him not to, he went ahead and did it. And, you know, the thing that shocks me is I haven't heard anywhere on mainstream media or in the mainstream press or anybody but me, which is really puzzling, pointing out that all of that 30% is going to fall on who? Muggins, you and me. Of course, because they're they just going to raise, raise their prices. prices. Yeah. How can these people not think that in the worst cost of living which crisis of our lifetime, which will add to, you should dump a 30%, a third corporation tax rise on the British public and British business, as if these companies are going to absorb it. That's ridiculous. No, absolutely right. And the one thing that I've never understood, actually, Roger, in this time, is that the inflation they keep talking about, normally inflation is uh, uh, too many people chasing too few goods, right? So you put the prices up yeah. so that that balances it, it out. This inflation is caused by fuel, which is something we have to buy. It's not like we're going, do you know what? I'm going to put all the lights on the heating on and open the windows because I can. Right. So this is stagflation, surely. Not stagflation. No, no. You're so spot on. And you're, again, one of the few people to talk about this. I mean, this is economics for dummies. OK, it, it's on the first. It would ten... have to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It's on the first 10 pages. Yeah. OK, yeah, uh, let me let me explain a little bit of what it is you just said in, in slightly more technical terms without, you know, making it into a complex thing. There's two main kinds of inflation. There's cost push and there's demand pull. Demand pull is when you go out and buy too many handbags, when you go out with your partner and your friends to a fancy restaurant three times a week. And you're spending money like crazy. Everybody's buying new cars. Everybody's going on holiday. Everybody's spending too much. It is, as you just said, driving prices up. How do you stop that? You raise interest rates, you make money more expensive, and you damp it down. Yeah. The other kind of inflation, which is what we have, is cost push inflation. It's non-consumer driven. It's driven, as you say, by energy, by food, by the gas price being manipulated by Putin, outside materials and services. We're not spending money, we're no. cutting back. Millions of people have to choose between heating and eating, for goodness sake. The stupidest thing the Bank of England could have done is to raise interest rates even once. In 2009, we had a similar situation of cost push. The Bank of England left interest rates at 0.5% for three years until the cost push inflation ran itself out, as it always does, okay, and there was no Jeremy Hunt and no Rishi Sunak and no Andrew Bailey going, we're fighting inflation, look, it's coming down, look what we did, because they did absolutely nothing. All these 11 interest rates have done nothing whatsoever to curb inflation. Of it's still not. going up. And then they said, oh, yeah, yeah, but we're protecting the pound against the dollar. Really, Andrew? Well, how's that going for you? We're at 120 something. Where's the 150 we've been at since, you know, 1723? It's just outrageous. And but nobody questions does, them. How does raising interest rates and giving us less money stop the inflation when the inflation is not being caught is being precisely it by just having to buy what is yes, expensive amen it just cripples us more and more mortgages 
more, are more than double now. It wrecks the property market. It destroys the rent to buy market. It's created so much havoc and damage and nobody is doing anything about it. And Bailey just goes on. Now, OPEC, the oil producing cartel oh, well, organization, has they? just cut production by a million six barrels. Guess what? Oil's gonna go back to, to $100 a barrel Inflation is going to go up and they're going to raise the rates even more. And we, you know, tomorrow is the end of our tax year. And I fear that we're in for a new year of more bad government decisions, bad opposition alternatives, confusion, sleaze, scandal, corruption, disorganization, and general chaos. Uh, the only good news is that the cost push inflation is going to fall by itself to about 3% next winter. Now they keep talking about the states and the dollar, but it's a different situation. Yeah. They have $1.7 trillion under the mattress from the pandemic, which they're spending with alacrity. They're going crazy now. They have to damp that down. So it's right for them to raise interest rates. And hey, guess what? It worked. Their inflation is now 5%, Yeah. but not here. So when we're promised by this government that they will bring inflation down, it's got nothing to do with them. This was going to come down anyway. This is happening in at least 10 other countries and you don't have a single president stroke prime minister, finance minister, chancellor, treasury secretary claiming it's anything to do with them. Only our two genius stars are claiming it, okay? <laughs> And they gaslight us because on I top, I, I said we're talking about kiddie stuff. When we move to corporation tax, it's grown up insanity time. But the thing that really, the cherry on the cake, the, the, the cherry on the cake is the gaslighting is when they tell us how well they're doing and how well we're doing. Nobody, but nobody believes it anymore. I mean, they have as much chance of getting, I, I don't know if we're on screen or just radio, but if you could see me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a big fellow. I mean, they have got as much chance right now of getting reelected as I do of being principal dancer of the Royal Ballet. <laughs> I think you've got more chance. Yeah. <laughs> actually, to be fair, to be fair. Um, with um, looking f into the, the future, new tax year begins tomorrow, more pain uh, to come. Where, looking at Andrew Bailey, and like you said, he doesn't have the best reputation, not like Mark Carney, but he, he, where do we see interest rates settling before they obviously have to come down again? Mortgage interest rates. Well, I, I, I don't, I, you slipped in a Mark Carney there. I, I, You're I, not a fan. I, well, not very. And I would refer to my interview a few years ago with Jacob Rees-Mogg, where we turned to Mark Carney for about 10 minutes and uh, uh, listen to that, and you just okay. go, Google, right. Google my surname and Reese. I just think compared to Bailey, I uh, mean, I, I, I don't, I, you know, well, Bailey is a bit of a disaster. Uh, as Alex Brummer, the city editor, the long-serving city editor of the Mail, uh, calls him the blundering Andrew Bailey. So yeah, I mean, he's got quite a, a reputation. Uh, Carney was also controversial, but in a different way. But I mean, we've really uh, we, we've really got a paucity of leadership around the world. We have a real problem. Uh, I can't name any leader that I find inspirational, and everybody I ask really struggles as well. And they're just making the wrong decisions one after another. The corporation tax is is just the best example. But of that's it. a political decision, surely, Roger, because that a lot of people. Most don't have a business, and they'll be going. Well, yeah, it's about time businesses paid more money. Absolutely, so it's just a political move. Yeah, to, but it's stupid because they can't see beyond the end of their nose that yeah. the next step is. And we're all going to pay more. We're, anyway. we're the ones who are going to pay for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, what about the mortgage rates? So, do you see them coming down next year? Uh, as inflation falls, yes, yes, I do. I mean, because they they're going to have to roll back the the interest rates at the Bank of England. Some have to. They're going to have to. Uh, and I think the mortgage rates will fall. Um, it depends on what state the property market is in. Some people are predicting, you know, dire, terrible things. I don't particularly think so. No. Uh, but I think it will certainly be hit. And uh, it just depends on what the demand is. But I, you know, I think the mortgage rates will stay pretty, uh, pretty difficult, pretty prohibitive in, in many cases for a while. So you're and, looking at coming down to around about 3%, which is still way higher than the 0. yeah 5. i mean you know probably about about two and three quarters to three yeah. yeah i think i think that would be livable yeah but we're we're in a maelstrom right now these these guys they can't guys and girls they can't sorry guys girls and non-binary people they can't stop 
They just keep enacting stupid things one after. I mean, it's just so plain. Because they think it's political gain. They think it's, it, it, they're, you know, oh, good, businesses will be paying more. That's, that's, they, they, they think, know that that is a way that they can play that they have, card. They have a short, yeah, they have a short vision. Yeah. They can't see the consequences. And it's all about them and staying in office and playing politics. And it's not, it's never about us. Now, I'm a consumer champion, okay? I mean, I try not to be political. I try not to take sides, but I do get very riled. And as I say regularly on other programs, or as people say about me on other programs on this marvelous television station, I froth. <laughs> I get really, really worked up. Good, when I, see, I love it. When I see such stupid things as the corporation tax, for example, or let's talk about energy. May I do that? Mm. Two thirds of our home energy bills are electricity. Now, electricity is priced 100% uh, according to the market price for international gas, which of course is manipulated by Putin. This government and successive government for decades, all the way back to the 80s when they nationalized the energy companies back then, and this legacy still stays, have priced electricity according to the gas price. But the national grid, Petri, runs a live website that tells you every day where our electricity is coming from. Some days, only 20% of it is coming from gas. Most days, it's 47, 56%. And yet, we're paying a much, much higher price for our electricity than we need to. It's estimated by experts, uh, people such as John Penrose, the MP who invented the price cap, which, by the way, he says is no longer fit for purpose, that we have paid 7.2 billion pounds in unnecessary electricity charges in the last two years. And the experts say that if the government, which has been told by Boris last June, by Ofgem, the regulator, by countless experts, by countless people to decouple electricity from gas, because, you know, we've got North Sea gas of our own, which is cheap. We've got renewables, wind, solar, nuclear. We've got all these things that cost far, far less. If we price the electricity off those, as shown on the National Grid uh, real-time website, with clicking every two seconds with how much of this we're using, how much of that, if you priced it off that, the experts say that our home energy bills would fall by 1,500 pounds in an afternoon. So no more worrying about whether smug Jezza is going to extend the relief for three months more, you know. Send that to the second furthest planet. I can't say the name of it here. People have to look that up. But, you know, I mean. <laughs> I know which one. We don't have to. It's next to Neptune. We don't yeah. have to worry about that. We'd have 1,500 pounds off the bill now. Tomorrow they could do it. But the, where's the incentive for the companies to do that when they, they're making that Well, no, no, profit? the government will have to tell them, they'll have to change the law and the regulation, decouple your prices from gas. Can't you run the country? Do you know how many times I ask this? I mean, <laughs> Rob Rinder wants to make me the consumer minister. I think you should be prime minister. I, I, every show I do, I get call-ins <laughs> that say that. I mean, if only, if they would have me. But, I mean, somebody needs to because this, look, it's just all I do as a consumer champion, as the people's champion, is call out BS and gaslighting. And use common sense and tell people exactly what's really going on uh, and what it's like. What's what's the harm? We know there's a deficit of common sense. Uh, Dr. Roger Gewolb, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I could talk to you all day. Me too. Um, a personal finance and credit expert and founder of fairmoney.com and campaign for fairfinance.com. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming in. Thank you. On the app, on your smart speaker, talk radio and talk TV.